What's up, Simonix? Welcome to day 23 of the Ionic Holiday Calendar. We are close to the end of our special December calendar, and for today I have something I'm really, really excited about. I was looking forward to create this video for quite some time, and now I want to show you the first impressions and my first view at Ionic 5. So, you question or you sent in questions in some time about Ionic 5, but that was only the Ionic CLI version, which is different. So, Ionic 5 beta, uh, the first beta came out in November and December the second beta. So, we will take a look at a few things. First of all, um, in general, the bug fixes always great. I won't go into detail of all of them. I just uh, noticed one bug fix uh, about something I actually never saw before. Uh, which is a collapsible header. So um, to implement this, I just created a blank Ionic um, application and I updated simply my package JSON to use Ionic Angular 5 Beta 2. Um, I hope at the time releasing this video, we're not already at Ionic 5, but I think we are not maybe Ionic Beta 3. So, back to the collapsible header, which is something you can implement in your uh, content as an additional header like this with collapse set to condense. Uh, I think this only works on iOS and the result looks like... Um, it shouldn't look like this actually. Yeah, the problem was just that I copied the code and these were wrong. So, still the same code and now the result looks like this. We don't see the regular header, although it is in place. And we only see this large header we have inside the ion content. And once we scroll down the page, this actually moves to the top and reveals the top bar. Um, so, you get this nice effect that you might have seen on iOS applications. Not really related to Ionic 5, but I still discovered it and so I wanted to show this. So, this was the bug uh, and this was fixed. Additionally, um, some other great bug fixes as well, but the features are even more interesting. Um, there's a lot about animation and I think we will get started with the third one, which is add support for text area inputs. Something really simple. But having an alert with a text area wasn't possible in the past. But now somebody uh, created this uh, feature and if you present an alert, you get a nice text area like this. The only thing I noticed so far is that the height of this text area is not set with a uh, CSS variable. So I tried to dig into the code changes, but all I found was the uh, regular variable, but we can still affect this by putting this little rule in our variables as CSS and targeting directly the text area alert input. So with that code in place, you could even have a huge text area right inside your alert. It's a little something, but once you come to a point where you need this feature, you will be happy that it exists. So that is a great thing about Ionic 5. Then let's move into two awesome new features, which are um, right here, Expose Ionic Animations. We are our Ionic Animation Controller and Expose Gestures by the Gesture Controller. So this does exactly what you think it does. Um, you're able to control specific gestures like double click or swiping a certain direction. You have to implement them yourself, but you still get access at least to them. So I created a little code for this. Let me format this a bit. For example, a gesture using the gesture controller, which is now directly inside the Ionic Angular package. And with that, you could create gestures on specific elements. And I just copied actually the code from somewhere right here. So I found this um, new addition to the documentation, which isn't live yet since it is Ionic 5. And in here, there are a few examples on how to use this. For example, this double click gesture uh, uses the date and the threshold to see if somebody clicked twice on an element that we define and then sets a random background. So not really the code isn't too interesting, but the general 
ability to create a gesture uh, with on start, on move, on end, and then enabling it helps us to easily add this, in our case, to the card element, which I added as a view child right here. And then let's see, I'm now able to double click this element and it changes. And on that way, we can also add other animations, uh, gestures. Animations is the second point I wanted to cover. And as well, in this document, we can see the animations and how they are used. So we can create animations and add different things, um, just like you're used to with, I don't know, the package, perhaps it was move.js or animate CSS, I don't, I don't know. But again, import the animation controller, which is now exposed in Ionic Angular. And then we can create our own animations, name them, do whatever we want. In this case, again, I copied the code from the uh, official documentation. And then at some point, simply call play on the animation, which results in something like this. I added a little square and on click, I will start the animation. And what happens is we see a nice animation right there using the Ionic Animation Builder. Really great stuff. But this isn't actually everything. So really animations and gestures, one huge step forward for Ionic 5. But what I also was looking for and watching were Ionic uh, or iOS 13 card style modal presentations. So normally a modal looks just like this. On iOS, since iOS 13, we have a different animation for this. So it's like stacked on top. And now we can do this with Ionic. I really enjoy this. Um, and the truth is it is super easy to implement. So let's go back. Here we have the regular present model um, functionality, really nothing special in here. But now we can add more to this. We can add a presenting element and basically this will be the foundation to calculate where the model should be displayed for iOS. And in the examples, they injected to the controller, um, to the constructor, of course, the private router outlet from ion router outlet. Uh, there we go, a bit too much in here because I was so excited. And then use the router outlet. Come on, I'm really so excited about this feature. Native element as a presenting element. And as well, a second option that we can add for iOS is swipe to close true. So with these two additions to our model, the model now suddenly looks like this. Oh, sweet Jesus, I really love this. And I can drag this down and you see the background coming up once again, the opacity of the overlay changes and it is just, it is just amazing. And of course they also implemented it. So this is the standard way of showing it on the regular element. And if you stack modal inside modal, you should get um, as a presenting element, the current top element, which I already implemented in our modal page. So we can open the modal and open another and you see the animation in the background. And this is really, uh, I don't know what to say. I really think this is one of the biggest uh, additions that I was looking for. I always uh, try to look into what they solved. So for example, the uh, animation, where is the, uh, I don't know, somewhere is here, the new feature. I think it was actually here at card style presentations. And then I just dig into this and try to find where they update the documentation to find the actual source on how to use it. But of course this will be released when Ionic 5 is released, but this is just amazing. Besides that, there are just a few breaking changes. Um, in the first beta 5.1, we can see the breaking changes, um, especially, uh, oh, okay, I think it was in the beta zero, actually. Um, the breaking changes, for example, are that we now are using CSS classes instead of these utilities. So wherever you have text center, you will also get a deprecated message normally with Ionic 4 already. So make sure that you already change them to this new class syntax. Events were finally removed. 
So we might have a video on the topic of RxJS uh, and perhaps subjects in the f path, uh, in the future or using Redux. I don't know what the name is actually. Um, I have to get into that as well. Besides that, um, yeah, a few more changes that you can look up on the releases page, especially the custom navigation changed. I think we highlighted this already in one of the videos in the calendar that you have to use the ion nav link instead now. Um, the search bar changed a bit. The split pane has a bit different uh, syntax now using a content ID instead of the main attribute. And in general, there are not too many breaking changes. So if you made the change from Ionic 3 to Ionic 4, you're already lucky because the change to Ionic 5 will be pretty easy. This is like perhaps a few hours if you have a lot of code, uh, otherwise maybe one hour to change a few things. And what you get is, a lot of bug fixes, improvements, um, the iOS 13 stuff style, you've seen uh, access to the gestures and animation controllers. So a lot of um, things that we can cover in the next videos. If you're interested in them, of course, let me know below so I know what I can create for you in the next year. I hope you enjoyed this quick preview of Ionic 5. I don't know when it will be released, but you can um, just look at the releases page every Thursday, at least in German time, uh, there's a new release. And of course, they will let you know when the final version is out. So two more days in our calendar. Thanks for watching today. Stay subscribed if you're not yet so, uh, subscribed. And then I will catch you tomorrow for a nice gift in our calendar.